Good afternoon. Today is January 10th, 2022. We are going to talk tomato. Um, I've had these tomato plants. I started from seed. Uh, they were, I believe, out of this package. I have a couple of these packages. This is the mortgage lifter tomato. And um, some people may um, know about the mortgage lifter tomato. It's a, a very, very good tasting tomato. Um, it was actually... If I can read the back of the package to get a little bit of information correct. It was created by a man in uh, West Virginia. He took one tomato plant, set it down, and put five around. And then they cross-pollinated, cross-bred this tomato plant. And they were so good that he sold the small plants and the tomatoes. And he sold so many of them, he was able to pay off the mortgage. He lifted the mortgage, sold... Um, of his little house it's like twenty thousand dollars back then and that's where it got the name mortgage lifter um the beekman boys if you are familiar with them beekman 1802 i believe they are they had a tv reality show for a while on one of those cable networks they uh they got into the mortgage lifter tomatoes because they taste so so good and um they make a spaghetti sauce that I, I know at least they have a spaghetti sauce made with them and uh, our tomatoes here are going really well we've got some blossoms coming on and I do prune these and pruning them I don't know if I have any left to show you is in between each of these leaves these like limbs coming out there'll be another little limb oh here we go Here's a little limb that's coming out. And what you want to do, pinch that one and that right in there. See that little, making another little arm. You want to pull that off. And that'll help the plant then not get so big. And it'll actually work on making tomatoes, making blossoms. It'll make the ones on it bigger and then your tomatoes will be bigger because a lot of times i just you know oh it's supposed to be a two pound tomato these are supposed to be two pounds i've never grown a tomato that was maybe more than a half a pound so that was one thing that you can do uh, fertilize well do not overwater tomato plants overwatering you will you'll think that the tomato looks like it's dying and it's like oh well it must be it needs more water well no you can actually overwater they're giving them too much water will make them die just as bad as not enough they only need according to this packet they only need um an inch of water per week but down here in florida with our sandy soil unless you do a lot of amending with the soil um won't hold a lot of water so and then the heat that comes on later in the spring if you call it spring i, I think our spring lasts like two weeks you'll want to have um you know maybe water every three days is about what i do unless it's raining and then i don't water at all another thing with these tomatoes everybody up north oh tomatoes love heat they do not love florida heat florida heat is um absurd there's too much of it it's too hot it's too moist in the summertime these tomatoes are best grown in the cool weather usually either late fall oh, there's another one of those either late fall or late winter early spring because once it gets nighttime temperatures have to get below 70 degrees for these plants to fruit if they do nighttime temperatures do not drop below 70 degrees these blossoms whether they get pollinated or not will fall off and die you won't have a tomato your plants will live and get big and and bushy and and stocky There's one little one right there. pick that off um but you won't have any tomatoes that's why um in the summertime florida we plant everglade tomatoes they're like a small cherry tomato that is um really good with the heat and they'll they're only about that big they used to call them grape tomatoes and cherry tomatoes is what i always call them and they will they'll go all you know all all summer but um this tomato like the slicing size 
you need to have cool weather. Right? You know, your nighttime lows have to get below 70, and, and come about May, it, it usually does not happen anymore until end of October sometimes. So you need that, that cool weather for your fruit to set because these will actually, they do a lot of stuff at night. Uh, from what I remember, tomato plants do all of their like growing and stuff like that. Now let's talk about bugs. Right now we don't have a lot of bugs down here even though we haven't had a good hard freeze. And um, we had a couple cool nights that were down in the 40s and maybe a few that were in the 30s, 9 area. But our bugs already are at a minimum for this time of, you know, normally it would have been really better, but we still got a lot of mosquitoes. Um, we don't have a lot of bug problems right now, which is nice. And I don't remember what I was going to say. I was talking about something about, um, oh, this is, this, now right now would be good with, if I could do some editing. But, I, <clears throat> I haven't been able to edit a video yet, and I don't think I will. I'm just going to keep it all natural. Um. All right, I paused the video so I could actually remember what I was going to say was that um, tomatoes in the store have no flavor. Well, one of the reasons is is that they gas them, and I forget the name of the gas that they do. Um, and they take a green tomato that's not ripe and they gas it so it gets nice and red. Well, it makes the tomato red, but it does not make the tomato ripe. Um, and then they sell them and there's no bugs on them because the bug won't really bother a green tomato. And what I do now is when I, right before the tomato gets, it's still pretty green, but it's a little bit soft and it's starting to turn a little pinkish red at the bottom. I pick that tomato as long as it's, you know, pretty, it's almost kind of ripe. And I put it into a cardboard box. And then I cover, I put, I close the flaps on the box. And then I let that tomato ripen in that box for about three, maybe four days. And that way bugs won't buy it, you know, bite into it. And then I don't have to spray it with anything to keep the bugs away. So, and it ripens really nice. And then another thing you can do is put a banana into that box too. And then that emits the same gas but it gives off more of that gas than um i think a xylene gas i have to i'd have to look it up again but you could even google that but put a banana in there close the flaps on the box you don't have to seal it up tight but just you know close it because the gas is in there with that and then those tomatoes will be beautiful red and ripe and juicy and so good um and then you won't have to worry about spraying them you won't have to worry about a squirrel coming over taking a bite out of it like out of every three tomatoes they'll take a bite out of one or two um, the bugs will get into you know some sort of worm or something will bite into it so then you got these really good tomatoes and that's pretty much all there is about tomatoes tomatoes are actually easy to grow the plants grow well on their own and like i said before don't over garden them just let them do their thing they know what they're doing i mean they've been around for you know I don't even know. It's probably be hundreds of thousands of years. I'm sure an Indian, you know, a Native American Indian, they they probably ate tomatoes someplace, and they just like, oh wow, look at this. There it is growing. We'll just eat that red thing. But yeah, these are all getting nice and big, and I started them all from seed, and I'm actually going to be starting some new seeds, so that I can keep them going until it gets too hot and then i'll do the everglade tomatoes so I'll, if you have any questions or any comments about any of this stuff uh, not pertaining to my video making because we all know that's at a you know very minimal at this point but i want to try to keep it more more off the cuff you know maybe that'll be a little more entertaining but uh Go and get your seeds started. You probably should have started them now. I usually try to start my winter garden or my actually my spring garden in December. That way um, I don't miss spring because that's usually just like January and February is our spring. And you want to be making tomatoes before it gets hot. And that's what you want to shoot for. 
Uh, but now lately it's hard to tell because our our climate has changed so much here lately with it that we haven't really gotten is that a that's a big snake over there I think. Let's go take a look. No wait. No, it's just a it's just a dead plant. Okay. There was a black snake around here. They call it a black racer. So I'm over here by the uh, tomato plants the other day, and uh, I, I'm terrified of snakes. But he left me alone. He or she left me alone. I left him alone. Her. And uh, we're better off that way. And then uh, we'll get over here um, maybe later today and do a little bit of... Um, Pea stringing. I got the rest of the posts in yesterday while I was burning some uh, cardboard. You know, we got to keep those greenhouses gases up there. You know, I don't want to have any frost. Got to keep burning that, that carbon, that carbon up there. And uh, yeah, they're, they're getting long. They, they're, they're starting to get their little, their little grabbers on there. Look at that. They're going to reach right up and grab onto that binder twine. We're going to string all across here. So, and then I think that's a volunteer radish because I, I fumble around with the seeds. They fly out all over the place, and they're so small. And then they're just jammed in here, too, and we're just probably end up thinning some of these out. I think these are radishes. Smells like a radish. Actually, it doesn't really smell like anything. Oh, well, we'll find out. I thought, I thought those were radishes. Those might be uh, turnips. I didn't plant any beets. So, okay, well, you know, go ahead and subscribe to this channel if you want to see some of our hijinks that we have coming up. And uh, maybe we'll get a tractor video going here because we're going to be replanting the asparagus over here on this side. I mowed the pulled the weeds out and I didn't find any more any more live roots left of the asparagus except for the ones that were up there from the great flood and there's the neighbor's dog a little tux he comes out here and he likes to bark at me while I'm videoing it doesn't even sound like a dog he kind of sounds like a rooster sometimes yeah okay anyway uh, we're going to rototill all this up. We had sweet potatoes out here, and I ground them up with the rototiller before, and then all that did was give me more sweet potato vines. So we're just going to let them go and do their own thing. And then uh, I got this whole area mowed off the other day, so we're going to be tilling that up. And uh, I don't know what we're going to plant. I'll probably do some squash and cucumbers, because I like uh, squash, and I like to make my own pickles. And that'll be another YouTube video of how to make refrigerator pickles. Um, I have a great recipe, and it's very good, and it's easy. You don't have to can anything. You just mix them all up, put them in the fridge. And now there's a garbage truck going by. Yeah, well, that's what happens when you're you're doing an, doing a video out here. You can. Uh, we're not going to edit that out because that's just how life goes. There's our binder twine down there, and our side cutters. We got a little bit of rain last night, so it was. Uh, they got a little rusty, but they're they're good to go. We can handle that. Cool. All right, and no, that is not a uh, musk melon or a cantaloupe. That is the kids' play ball out there. The two-year-old and I were playing ball the other day, and it rolled in there. And by golly, I'm not going to go get it. So, all right, well, take care, and we'll talk to you soon.